Hello there, my name is Fergus Fadden and in this video I am going to show you five tips to make your PowerPoints purr. Not only are we going to add some cats, but we are going to learn five tricks to really improve our PowerPoints. So let's look at tip number one here on how we can make these PowerPoints purr. So really, the very first one is to use templates. And when I say templates, I don't mean just template designs or themes. What I actually mean are actually fully fledged PowerPoints. So let's just jump out of this presentation for a quick second and see how we can indeed achieve that. So um, as I've got PowerPoint open already, I'll just click here where it says file. So I get my home menu. This is what you will arrive at when you open PowerPoint for the first time. Now you may see a screen that looks like this, or you may see a screen where you have uh, different options available. If you see this one, you need to click here where it says more themes. Uh, this is the screen that you might likely be presented with the first time you open PowerPoint, but if you're a regular user of PowerPoint like me, you will have arrived at the other one. Now, the first thing you get here are just themes. These are just colors and fonts, etc., chosen for you, and that might be what you want. However, my suggestion is to use template presentations themselves, and you can find it here if you go underneath the presentations tab. And what this will bring up for you are not only the themes selected, but if we just go ahead and choose one of these, so let's get a nice one. Oh, there's so many to choose from. It's, it's almost uh, hard to, to make a choice. Let's go for this powerful presentation. So first of all, as usual, I'll get this little blurb of what this presentation is about. Create compelling presentations with this carefully draft, crafted design template. Uh, create more powerful uh, PowerPoint presentations with slides, starter tips, and tricks, and more. So, uh, powerful presentations are within reach every time with this creative PowerPoint theme template. Uh, create a powerful presentation or pitch using this creative PowerPoint template. So, PowerPoint is really going for the creative and powerful uh, point of view with this one for sure. So, let's go ahead and click create and see what we get. So right away, you see that my whole presentation is populated with slides right from the get go. And it even has my slides kind of categorized here. Look at here, instructions, slide starters, and these little arrows here, I can collapse these so that I can see my whole uh, slideshow or presentation within its categories. Now, if I click on each one of them, it will give me instructions, way to, ways to get started. And these instructions are included within the theme of the PowerPoint itself. So this is really, really a fantastic way to get you started. If you're having any kind of creative block at all, just jump in with one of these and you can just adapt everything that has been created there for you already. Okay, so that's tip number one, use templates. Let's go back into the presentation here and bring up my next little cat and see how we can uh, extend these five tips to make PowerPoint purr. So what I suggest next is to use the slide sorter view. Uh, so what is the slide sorter view? Well, without further ado, let's just jump right into it so we can see what I mean. So back here in my uh, template presentation, which I just created, down here in the bottom, these are my PowerPoint controls, as it were. And there's one here that looks like a little box of uh, four boxes. And if I just choose that one, what it does is instead of my thumbnails along the left there, I get these slightly enlarged thumbnails. And this is really useful. For example, if I want to change the order of my slides. Now I can do that from the regular view, but this kind of more bird's eye view of the whole thing can make that process a little bit easier. So let's say I want to move this fact slide over to position seven. I simply click it and drag it and boom, there it goes can be a really powerful tool in kind of getting a sense of where the overall direction of your presentation is going. 
Then to get back out of it, just click on this normal button just to the left of the slide sorter view and you're back into it. As I mentioned, you can rearrange the order of slides from the regular thumbnail pane here along the left. Uh, however, you know, you only ever can see about six of those at a time. So when you have this slide sort of view, it can give you a much better sense of everything. Okay, what is my next tip to make your PowerPoint purr? Well, tip number three is to use the duplicate function. And let me show you what I mean. So we are probably all pretty familiar with, um, maybe I should just get out of that. We're all quite familiar, no doubt, with, you know, copy and paste. So if I go back into my presentation, which I've created here, and as usual, I can just add a new slide and they all have their theme and everything added there. Well, I'll just add a blank one to show what I mean here. So let's say I want to add a shape here, simple shape. Okay, so just a circle. I can click on it and I can right click and go copy and then I can click outside and then I can go uh, paste and then I got another one. Another way of doing this is to hold down, to, to hold down command, command on a Mac or control on a PC and notice there how my uh, cr cursor changed to this little kind of square and a plus. Now, if I click and drag, it will duplicate. If I make a box over all three of these to select them all and do the same thing again, hold down control and click and drag, I can duplicate. Another way of duplicating is simply to select an object and press control D, D for duplicate. So I'll just write that in there, control plus click and plus drag or I'll just write or the other option is control plus D. And that will let you duplicate things. So let me just get rid of a bunch of these. And I'll put that one back in the middle because I'm gonna use this slide when I show my next tip. And the next tip here, actually, if we can just go back in my presentation real quick, after duplicating, is going to be aligning objects perfectly. So let's look at how we can align objects perfectly. So in order to do that, I'm gonna first of all, get out of my tiger presentation here and jump back over to um, the circle which I just created. So let's say I uh, want to create, let's say another little uh, box inside there and I'm gonna make that box like that really quick, okay? And I'm just gonna add some simple just text, okay? So if I want to align these two objects together, what I can do is simply drag over both of them and then on the, under the home tab within the drawing group, I can click here where it says arrange. And then from arrange, I can go down to where it says align and then go align center. Now those are center, but it's not quite uh, horizontally aligned. So let's go back in here again and go align and then go align the middle. Okay, so now things are perfectly aligned. You can do this by hand. So if I just click it, notice this line that's appearing between both objects. That's telling me that it is now uh, horizontally aligned. And then if I keep moving it over, that's telling me that the left side of the black box is aligned with the center of the circle. If I keep moving it over, now I can see that now th there's something interesting. Notice I get a very long line there. That's telling me that the black box is aligned to the center of the slide. Move it over another little bit. And now I know that my black box with the text inside it is aligned to the circle. So watch out for that long line. Watch if I move this down to the middle, I get this. You see it goes right through the middle and the middle of the slide. That's telling me it's aligned to the middle of the slide and the box. So I want it just aligned with the 
um, object. Now, you know, as I mentioned in the beginning, a good idea is just to select the objects that you want to align and use the align tool. That way, you know, there, there's less margin for error than doing it by hand. Okay, so we're making good progress here with these five tips to make PowerPoint purr. So the very last one, where pretty much all my cats come together and they're gonna be all purring is this one, flip the slide orientation. Okay, so what do, we, what do I know? What do I know? <laughs> what do I mean by that? Um, okay, so let's just jump back over to PowerPoint or the template that I was using. We've probably seen in Word, sometimes we have a landscape page. It's kind of a page on its side and a portrait uh, page. It's kind of a page straight up. What if we wanted to do that with our PowerPoint slides? Our PowerPoint s s slides, you can see here that they're wider than they are uh, taller. Uh, and because of that, we could call, we could say that they have um, landscape layout, but let's say we wanted a portrait layout. Uh, in order to do that, just go to the design tab and then from the, the design tab, click on slide size, but not in the middle of the button, towards the bottom of the button where you see this little drop down arrow, click right there. And then you have these standard sizes, but we want to go custom slide size. And then very simply, what we need to do then is click where it says portrait and then click OK. And then you have two options. You are scaling to a new slide size. Would you like to maximize the size of your content? And the content is in this case, my circle and my square or scale it down, which means, you know, make it smaller so that it will fit on the new uh, slide. I'm pretty sure that this is gonna fit anyway, so I'm just gonna go maximize, okay? Now, the one thing about this, which is different from Word, notice that it has this effect on every slide. So me, you know, I, I use this when I'm making a presentation of one slide, and maybe it's not even a presentation, maybe I'm just using PowerPoint to make, for example, a, a label or something like that, where I have, you know, let's say some warning text, and this is gonna be a, you know, a label that's telling people about a danger and probably, you know, uh, change the color there to, let's say, red or something like that. Okay, that's obviously very uh, quick and dirty, as they say, but let's say I was making a label that looks, you know, something like this, that's gonna be a, um, well, I can add a couple of little design elements there, but, you know, nothing too much. Maybe we could do something like that. And then we could, once again, uh, you see we have these align options under many tabs. So I have them here under my shape format. So I'll just go align center and okay. So let's say I'm making a label that looks something like this. Um, that might be a reason why I want to use this portrait flipped layout for my PowerPoint. Okay, so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, my name is Fergus Fadden. Uh, this was five tips to make PowerPoint purr. Please do head on over to uh, my channel, which is Integrated Skills here on YouTube. Uh, I'd be ever so grateful if you hit the subscribe button on my channel, you'll find a bunch of videos focused uh, for teachers, how to become English language teachers, but you'll also find lots of tutorials on using PowerPoint, Word, Google Classroom. And if you want to search through all my videos, you can do it like that. I have them categorized there, or you can also check out my playlists and here you'll find uh, Microsoft PowerPoint Essentials. Please do hit the subscribe button, hit like on this video if you found it useful. Please do share it with your friends and colleagues and social media if you think they would find it useful. And drop a comment below. Let me know what you would like to see more videos about. What would you find 
helpful and useful in your use of PowerPoint. Okay, everybody, thank you very much. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope these five tips to make PowerPoint per is going to up your presentation making game. Okay, thank you very much and see you in the next one. Bye for now.